May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them out into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scourging heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Human Resources Department is a very important department in any organization. And it's important because labor laws seem to be very, very complex. They appear to me anyway, that has no experience in labor law at all, labor laws appear to be a minefield. We're sure to get into trouble when we go into human resources. Just about anywhere, everywhere. The logic of our world, and especially 
our South African context with its great emphasis on workers' rights, this logic of the world seems to be thrown out of the window by Jesus. This parable that he tells this morning seems to throw out all the ideas that we have regarding labor laws and protecting workers' rights. Just think about it. A full day's wage for just one hour's work? How lucky. That chap must have felt really, really lucky. I think anybody, even today, would feel lucky if they got a full day's wage for just an hour's work. I don't know, though, what the CCMA would think of the vineyard owner. I think he may have got himself into a little bit of trouble with his actions. But as the prophet Isaiah suggests today in our first reading, these laws that we have, that we're sort of familiar with, if we applied them to God, they would not work. They would not fit. Because these laws, the laws we make, limit God's enormous love and generosity. These laws are far too narrow for God. They don't allow God to be God. Isaiah marvels at this awesomeness of God, this magnificence of God, this incredible generosity and mercy of God. He marvels at the gap between the ways of God, how God acts, and our human stinginess and littleness. He quotes God as saying, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. God is not like Lady Justice, eh? We know, we've seen statues of Lady Justice standing there holding the scales in her hands, trying to find a balance. God doesn't balance out our sins and merits in the ways of Lady Justice. God has his own ways. God has his thoughts. God has his form of justice. Isaiah understood that. He realized that. And that's why he invites the people who are in exile in Babylon. That's why he invites them to a new way of thinking, a new way of acting, a new mentality. Isaiah is trying to get these people to have a kingdom mentality. It's clear, I think, it's clear that the conversion that Isaiah is speaking about, the conversion he wants for those people in exile, is not simply that they turn away from their sin that they leave corruption behind. That's not all he expects. He is asking for so much more. The prophet is hoping that there will be a radical transformation of the people in exile, a radical change to their thinking and their behaving. But most of all, a radical change in how they see God, how they see the ways of God. I think you would agree that our modern society, and perhaps it's always been like this, 
our society operates so much on sort of economic principles, market forces, eh? It operates too on individual success. Are we top of the pile? Are we the best? It operates on accumulating power and influence and, of course, lots of money, too. In our society, people are often paid what others think they are worth. And we are conditioned from even very small. We are conditioned to succeed at all costs to be better than others. If you can't keep up, tough luck, you lose out. Perhaps because those are the ways, the thoughts, the behaviors of our world, perhaps that's why we find discipleship so difficult why we find the kingdom of God such a challenge. Because it is so different to the culture, the environment that we exist in. It is almost against everything that we know and are taught. The kingdom so often doesn't resemble our reality at all. Of course, we know that we are not the only ones who have found the gospel and the kingdom mentality a challenge. It was for the people in exile. It was for Jesus' disciples too. Remember the two apostles who wanted to be top of the pile in the kingdom, one on the right and one on the left? But when we encounter Jesus, when we have a personal relationship with Jesus, we need to expect that things will be different. We need to expect that we will have to rethink many of our priorities, that we will have to act differently. On Thursday this last week, we celebrated the Feast of St. Matthew. And we all know the story of the calling of Matthew, don't we? There he was, sitting counting his ill-gotten gains. And Jesus came up to him and said, follow me. And he left all that money, all his old ways. He left it all and followed Jesus. And when we read that story, we think, wow, How could he possibly have done that? I couldn't do that. I couldn't just leave everything behind. I couldn't just change everything and suddenly follow Jesus. And so I think this radical transformation and change that is expected of us who are building the kingdom I think we're frightened by it. I think we're scared. We don't know. We don't know how to let go. How to allow ourselves to embrace fully the ways of God. I don't think we know how to transform our thinking. Let God do that. I don't think we know. 
I don't think we know how to let God change our expectations, our behaviors, our goals. And so we are daunted by the prospect of being kingdom builders. I think it's why some people find stewardship month in the parish very difficult, uncomfortable, why they run past the dedication table as fast as they can. (gasps) I can't give my time. (gasps) I'm too busy. I can't give my talents. I haven't got any. I'm not good at singing. I can't give my treasure. I've got absolutely zero money. It's too scary to make these commitments. They make us uncomfortable. But dear friends, if we are able to say yes like St. Matthew, if we're able to say yes to a relationship with Jesus, our lives do change and always for the better. Always. Look at St. Paul. Before his Damascus Road experience, he was violently anti the gospel, the kingdom. Afterwards, look at that reading from Philippians today. You see a man deeply, deeply committed to the ways of Jesus. He will do anything for Jesus. That is a profound and radical change. And it was possible because he allowed his encounter with Jesus to really mean something. He allowed the Spirit of God to move him. He developed quite clearly, as did St. Matthew, a kingdom mentality. We can choose. We can choose like the Pharisees and the scribes. We can choose to pick and fiddle with Jesus' teachings so that we can stay comfortably where we are. We can choose to argue about complicated and complex laws, just like the CCMA have. So that Sunday and Jesus stays nicely in a little box. We can choose the ways of the world or we can choose to allow ourselves to be transformed. Transformed so as to think with a kingdom mentality. The ways we are familiar and comfortable with the ways of God. Which will it be?